Alright, hello guys, hello again. Um, this is my third take recording this, so hopefully it uploads and it works. Um, I know I had trouble last week uploading my video correctly, so sorry for anyone who had trouble seeing it. Um, but anyway, uh, for this discussion, I chose to answer the question, should people go out of their way to avoid products that contain high fructose corn syrup? Why or why not? Um, high fructose corn syrup is made from corn starch, which is then broken down into glucose by enzymes. Many carbs that are starchy, such as rice, are broken down into glucose, where, whereas uh, high fructose corn syrup is half glucose and half fructose, which contributes to half the total content of sugar and in excess of amounts can lead to health problems. Um, the fructose needs to be converted by the liver into glycogen or fat before it can be used for fuel. Uh, before high fructose corn syrup, most people obtain their fructose in much less amounts than now, but from natural sources such as fruits and vegetables. Most fructose is absorbed by GLUT5, which is the fructose transporter, but the body doesn't have a large capacity to absorb high amounts of fructose, which means it can lead to malabsorption, which can then lead to bacterial fermentation. This means that in taking high amounts of fructose can affect the intestine and cause painful symptoms such as abdominal pain or bloating. When glucose and fructose are absorbed together though, fruct uh, fructose absorption increases and once absorbed only small amounts at a time enters a sy uh, systemic circulation. Fructose also enters at a later stage in the gly glycotic, glycolytic reaction chain than glucose. Sorry, I'm a little tired. Too much fructose can lead to the formation of, from, of fatty acids via de novo lipogenesis, and that's the pathway that transforms surplus non-fat in energy into fat by synthesis of fatty acids from acetylcholine. And then this can cause lactic acid. Because of fructose's stimulation of the DNL, one may have an increased risk of disease. This is due to the high fat accumulation in the liver, but may not affect individuals who are using it in place for other carbohydrates, but it still can raise liver lipid content. We don't know, though, if this is due to fructose or due to an excess calorie consumption. So getting back to the question, should people go out of their way to avoid products that contain high fructose corn syrup? Um, my answer is yes. Um, those that have a high intake of sugar sweetened products, such as soda, have also been associated with the development of type 2 diabetes. My dad actually got diagnosed with type 2 diabetes about seven years ago. The time leading up to it, he had little to none nutritional knowledge or education, and he told me he would sometimes eat a whole cheesecake in one night. Um, so since finding out he had type 2 diabetes, he has cut out high fructose corn syrup completely from his diet and he was able to fall below the pre-diabetic line as of two years ago, which is pretty awesome. Um, and he has also lost around 40 pounds in doing so. Um, since there isn't a ton of research on this yet, like whether or not fructose is completely correlated with obesity or uh, metabolic syndrome, anything in high excess. I believe is not good for your body. Um, sugar in general has addictive rewarding properties, which is why I believe people consume so much of it anyway. Um, it's also so readily available um, in our culture, unfortunately. Um, but that being said, one's diet outside of high fructose corn syrup also plays a huge role on whether fructose malabsorption happens and as well as how much fructose is consumed. So basically, I believe that fructose is good in adequate amounts, as well as when it is found naturally in foods, such as fruits and vegetables. I think everything um, is okay in moderation. Uh, but to decrease one's risk for developing, developing metabolic syndrome or for being overweight, I do think that high fructose corn syrup should be avoided. But avoiding fructose altogether is not necessarily healthy because the body does use this for energy and fuel. But 50 milligrams per day as a limit of fructose or other sugars does not seem to correlate the risk of obesity in comparison to other sugars. So my answer is kind of yes, um, but mostly yes. Um, I think it's better to get fructose from um, more naturally derived sources instead of um, getting something that's 50% glucose and 50% fructose. So thanks for watching.